Schaefer Pen Company presents The Adventurers Club. Two stories about men of daring. <laughs> to men of rugged stamp, The Adventurers Club in Chicago is hearth and home. Its high ceiling walls hung with strange trophies from exotic lands. Native knives and spears, priceless ivory from Africa's Gold Coast, and shrunken human heads. Of the members seated before the roaring fire, all our intrepid adventurers. For neither fame nor fortune merit membership in this most exclusive club. Only those who have participated in some strange and thrilling adventure are admitted. Man, it's attacking! Look, look, look. We hit a sand dune head on in this fort. I'm plus the air. We'll be crushed to death. But if we stop, the sand will bury us truck and all. Uh, the sand must be getting in the motor. It's missing. Yeah, you're right. We'll have to stop. We'll ruin the engine. I don't think the sand will pile up deep enough to cover it. But what about food? We have barely enough to get us across the desert. We can still make it if the storm doesn't last over two days. Okay, you're the boat. All right. Signal Paul and Musak to stop, too. <laughs> I hope they can hear us all right. We haven't seen their truck since this infernal sandstorm caught up with us. I don't hear any answer to our signal, do you? They were ahead of it. Maybe they made it through the dunes before the storm caught them. I'd like to think so, Pierre, but we can't take a chance on them being lost. We'll have to get out and look for them. You're not going to get out of this crazy storm. There's nothing else to do. The wind's blowing that sand 140 miles an hour and cut your face right open. I'm going to wrap this ass around my face. Put on gloves to protect my hands. But you can't even see through the sand. It's like a blizzard. You'll be lost 10 feet from the truck. Have you got any rope? Yeah, there's some right here behind the seat. Now, let me have it. What are you going to do? I'm going to tie one end of the rope around my waist like this. The other end of the truck so I can find my way back. Give me that other scarf. I'm going with you. You better stay here. I can manage. If both of us go, we'll double our chances of finding them. All right. I'm going to open the door of the truck now. You ready? All set. This way, Pierre. Get down on your hands and knees. Hang on to the rope. First side. Whoa. First side. There are you. Oh, answer me! They can't hear you in this storm, Byron. We might as well go back. Oh, let's go ahead a bit more. We haven't come to the end of the rope yet. First third! Listen, did right. someone answer? I didn't hear anything. First third! First third! She did answer. Hurry, over this way. First third! Hold on. I think he's more to the right, Byron. Hello, my third! Over here. To the left. Where are you? I think you must be over this way. No, no. No, the sun's just ahead of us. Oh, here it is. I'm following you. Here, Musag. Take the water from my canteen. Uh, I'll hold it for you. Yeah, that's right. I'll drink some more. Huh? You all right? I can't see. Oh, what's that? I'm running board of the truck. When Musag got out, the wind must have knocked him against it and stunned him. I am... <coughs> All right. No, sure. Sure, you're all right, Mr. Take hold of his feet. Help me carry him into the cabin of the truck. Okay. Never mind me, Mr. Boy. He's lost. Find Boy. We'll find him as soon as we get you inside the truck. Oh. 
Sounds like we're all just in time. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? Lift him up. I can't see where I'm going. Over to the right there. There's the seat cushion. Yeah. I used to say you're on the truck with us. You saved my life. Borgo. He went to look for you. All right, Massage. You stay quiet now. We'll be back in a little while. Come on, Pierre. We've got to find Paul. It's hopeless, Byron. We've been crawling around this black desert for nearly an hour. Yes, I'm afraid he's wandered too far from the truck. Oh! Oh! Maybe he's already found his way to the truck by this. Brian, jump. Listen. I hear singing. You better get hold of yourself, Byron. Strange telling on you. Keep still. It is, Paul. How do you like that singing in the sandstorm? It must have driven him mad. Oh, I've lost it. Wait a minute. I think he must be over this way. There. Now, come up here. Oh! Oh! Oh, Miss Hughes, I'm so glad to see you. I knew that you were coming. But surely you heard us calling. What? Why didn't you come to us, Paul? Well, if we both stumble around in the storm, Monsieur, we may never meet. So, I stand perfectly still and sing. That way you find me. <laughs> it's very simple. I think you showed good sense of that. Come on. Let's get back to the truck so we can help some other. <laughs> For three interminable days, while the sandstorm raged outside, the four of us sat huddled together in the cab of the truck. Sand piled high around us and over us, swirled through the cracks of the doors and floorboard, into our hair, down our clothes, even worked its way through our scars underneath our goggles. At last, toward evening of the third day, after we had munched our last two slices of dry and gritty bread, Usag, our Arab guide, could stand it no longer. What's good of Florak? Three days and nights have we sat in this cursed spot, with the sand piling up around us like a tomb. Ah, but what can we do, Musak? We can't drive in a storm. We'll just have to wait until it blows over. <coughs> that is to wait only for death, monsieur. I have seen storms such as this one. Not for weeks. Oh, you will starve. Well, I'm not going away for weeks. Don't be a fool, Pierre. If you get out of the truck, you'll lose your way in five minutes. Monsieur de Prora speaks the truth. You do not know the desert as I do. <laughs> it is I who must find a way through these dunes and get help. No, no, Moussac. You could never make it. <coughs> you saved my life three days ago, monsieur. Perhaps in this way, I shall be able to repay you. May I see your compass, monsieur? <coughs> compass? Uh, certainly, Moussac. Our truck is still headed due north, see? Then, the outpost of Borgla is to the left, is it not, monsieur? Yes, yes, that's right. Very well. That is the way I shall go. Oh, do not try it, Moussac. You will only die in this storm. Twice have I made the great pilgrimage to Mecca. I have seen the sacred mosque and kissed the black stone. If it is the will of Allah that I shall die in the desert, then I shall die. Now, monsieur, I will bring help to you if Allah wills it. Farewell. Wait, my God, Let him go, Peter. If anyone can make it, he can. According to his faith, he must attempt this for us, because we saved his life. Uh, this Moussak, he's a brave man, and a good man. But he'll never make it through those dunes alive. I knew he wouldn't get through. Poor Musak. When we had some food. I'm beginning to think Musak was lucky to have died too quickly. Wait, wait. Is the wind dying down a little? Or do I just imagine it? After six days in the sandstorm, monsieur, one can imagine anything. No, no. Look outside. It is clearing. 
I can see the outlines of the surrounding dunes. Sacre bleu. We are safe. Maybe we've all gone mad. I can hardly believe it. No, it stopped. Let's get out and look around. Oh, help me push the door. Oh, she is moving, monsieur. Where do I get my shoulder against it? <sighs> Come on, Pierre. Look, the sun's coming through. Oh, how wonderful it is to feel alive again. I'm so stiff I can hardly walk. Pierre, you and I better get the shovel and start digging the trucks out while Paul repairs the engines. Look, there is the other truck. Only the cab is sticking out of the sand. I guess there's nothing to do but dig. We oui, and I will get my tools and start to work on the engines. In a few hours, we'll be on the way again, and soon we will be safe in Wurgla. <laughs> True to his word, Paul had the trucks running again in a surprisingly short time. But it was still nearly 200 miles to work there. Hour after hour, we drove on under the burning Saharan sun. Paul had lost 35 pounds, and my own clothes were beginning to hang on me like a flour sack. Pierre was nothing but skin and bones, yet he insisted on driving our truck. I kept checking the compass to make sure that we didn't lose even a precious mile since it was imperative we get food before all of us collapsed. Watch up here. We're heading too far west. We'll wind up in Spanish Morocco at this rate. If we only had something to eat. I, I think I'd better take over the wheel, Pierre. You're almost done in. I'm all right, Byron. Why is everything getting so dark? Look out. You're heading straight for that dune. All right. Move over, let me drive. Oh, I'm the driver of this truck. Pierre, look out, you're going to hit that dune, look out! Now, we return to the thrilling true life story of adventure account Byron de Prorock. Fleeing northward through the Sahara Desert with the priceless treasures from the ancient tomb of the Tuareg Queen, Teen Hinnan, Count of Prorok and his party were held up for six days by a terrible sandstorm, during which they ran completely out of food. Pierre Dumont, exhausted from hunger, has just collapsed at the wheel of his truck, and the four-ton Renault has just smashed head-on into an enormous sand dune. Now, on the sand near the stall truck, Count of Prorok and his French mechanic Paul are bending anxiously over their under. Pierre. Pierre, are you all right? Oh, yeah. He's opening his eyes. See? What happened? The sand dune. Look out, Byron. Well, the truck is stopped up here. Now tell me, do you hurt anyone? Uh, no, I, I'm all right now. The truck okay? Yes, Pierre. He just blacked out at the wheel for a second. Is he all right, monsieur? I think so. No bones broken anyway. Food. The food. I must have something to eat, Byron. We'll be in Wagler before long. Uh, you think uh, you can drive the truck all right, monsieur? The corrupt. Of course. I'll take the lead. I don't know what a Pierre can last till we get to Wagler Paul, but we've got to try. Let's go. How are you feeling up here? My head aches badly, Byron. Maybe if I had some food. <laughs> How much farther is it to work, Labyrinth? Not much farther, Pierre. Why don't you try to sleep? How is he, monsieur? Not good. We'll drive all night. If we can just make Wardler and get him some food. It's getting light, Byron. Yes, we've driven all night, Pierre. That Paul's horn. He wants to stop. I hope there's nothing wrong. We'll soon find out. Here he comes. Why is he pointing over there to the east? Monsieur de Brock, look over there. A village. Where? That's probably a mirage. Oh, but you have passed it, monsieur. Well, back to the east. I still don't see it. It is a village. I can see the native hut. Here, by Look. Through the brock. They must have food there, monsieur. It's a miracle. We could never have reached water. How do you know the natives of that village are friendly? I don't. But we'll have to take a chance. We've got to get something to eat. After all, we have the machine gun if everything else fails. We'll drive in first, Paul. You follow right behind us. Be ready for action if anyone acts peculiar. Look. The natives are coming up all around us. 
I don't like the look of this. I'm glad Paul parked right behind us. Well, we're here now. We may as well get out and greet them. Wait. Make sure you can stand over it. I don't want them to see how weak we are. I think I can carry it off, all right? Here comes Paul from the other truck. Sacre bleu. Never have I seen such a gang of cutthroats. Why do they all wear veils? Have you ever heard of the veiled product, Pierre? You mean it? Here comes the chief. Welcome, my stranger. The servant of Allah greets you. Greetings, noble chief of the Twilight. We've come to ask if you'll sell us food and camel's milk. From what part of Sahara do you journey? We've come from the south, from the Ahagar Plateau. For six days, a sandstorm raged in the desert. No man could come through it alive. We were caught in that storm, and we camped for the six days. Now our food's gone. That's why we've come to you. Our drag supplies are very low. But can't you spare us some milk and bread? You will pay us in gold? We have only the paper money of Algiers. I think maybe you have gold in the giant automobile. Yes, I'm on the treasure bar. Let's get out of here. Oh, he's just guessing. This is the only money we have. We'll give you all of it for milk and bread. Very well. I will take paper money. Akbar, bring food and be quick. Thank you, Chief. Allah will reward you for helping travelers in distress. Food will be here soon. And while you eat, we will do for you the ancient Swarek dance of welcome. Is uh, that what those drums are for? Yes. That is our dance music. Is... Uh, is that what those drums are for? Yes. That is our dance music. But we heard the drums when we drove up. You must have known that we were coming. We of the desert know many things. I don't like this, Byron. We can't leave without the food, but keep an eye on the trucks. Oh, I'm getting a headache already, monsieur. Watching for food with one eye and for trouble with the other. Ah, the food is here. You will eat. There, in the shade. Uh, don't bother, Chief. There's shade enough right here at the side of the truck. I never mind the shade, just... Hand me a cup of that milk. Here you are, monsieur. Help. Take it easy, Pierre. You'll make yourself sick. Oh, that stew smells delicious. All things are ready. And now we dance while you eat. Uh, won't you have something to eat with us, Chief? Thank you. I have eaten long since. Uh, that food is excellent, but uh, I do not care for the floor show. They're forming a big circle around us. As right. long as we're not cut off from the trucks, we're all right. You feel better, Pierre? I could eat ten times as much. Yeah, but you mustn't. Too much food now would be almost as bad for you as none at all. Uh, what we do not eat now, we can't take with us. Those native drummers seem to be working themselves into a frenzy. Now, I wonder where that chief has gone. Find who he turned out to be. Is that not he over there, talking with those warriors? Warriors? Great Caesar, by Look at the four brick swords those four men are wearing. They're ready to cut the food from us. They're so Look, the doctors have drawn their song. Come on, we can't let them take the touch. I'm up to the machine gun at the top of your truck, Paul. You're now going to hold them off. This is it, Pierre. I'm not even pretending to dance anymore. We have to shoot out of the truck. We're going to try to get our tires. We can't let them do that. And now, Baron, they're talking. They're closing in on Paul, too. Come on, get you back to the truck, Pierre. Hurry, Paul, get that machine gun going. We got Paul. No, he made it. Climbing up to the machine gun. They're getting closer, Byron. Let him have it, Paul. <laughs> that machine gun's ready to do the trick. Yes, that's the door back. Give them another burst, Paul. Good work, Paul. Good work. It's the ammunition with you. Well, we said another box. It's here. I'll bring it. Here. Help me with your gun. I'm glad. Hurry. Hurry. Why was the law? I'll take it here. Okay. If they get you back here. No, no, I'm all right. Here, grab the ammunition. Is this all we have? That's all, but it's enough to stand them up for a while. I'll get the cap. Uh, there's not a ten cents ready for the ammunition. I want it out there. Save the ammunition until they're close enough for it to do some good. Wait a minute. What's that? Surely the water is not at death. Oh, if they do, we are lost. No. No, that's a French army plane. He's coming directly for us. There are two seats. What good would that do? If he landed, he'd be in the same fix we're in. The squad are calling at him now. Get the staff at the truck. He's dropping something. Hey, Bob! He's trying to hit us. No, no, it isn't a bomb. It's a package. The British squad thinks it's a bomb. They are running away. He'll be back soon enough when I see it doesn't explode. Oh, no, no, look, monsieur. The pilot is chasing them. He's dropping things all the time. 
That's a flying boot coming down now. Look at the fire ground. Oh, 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 he's quick with it, that pilot. He saw our trouble and came to the rescue. Right. Hold up at that first package he dropped was meant for us. I'm going to get it. What? Be ready to start as soon as I get that package over to Pierre's truck. Oh, wait a minute, Joe. I will be ready. Where are you going, Byron? Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. I'm going to break this package. Start your motor. Hurry up. We'll pull the car and come back. Can't go any faster. This package is heavy. Why in the world did you stop for that? It's addressed to us. What? We'll miss you the boat off. Hurry. The child is coming back. Here, Pierre. Take the package. All right. Now, move over. Let me drive. Get on, Paul. Yeah, see what's in it. Hey, Scott, what is it? It's smooth. I guess a note from the bank commandant at work. What does he say? They got worried about us when they heard about the sandstorm. A relief caravan left work this morning, and the plane came out ahead to look like storm. Then we've got nothing more to worry about. The plane will give them our location, and we should be the relief caravan before night. <laughs> This beautiful house, as director of the Museum of Algiers, permit me to express our deep appreciation for these rare archaeological treasures. These relics from the tomb of Queen Din Hinan will provide future generations with a keener insight into the customs and culture of the ancient Sahara. I have arranged to exhibit them in a special hall bearing your name. Monsieur Roussel, you do me a great honor, and I'm very touched. I have a favor to ask of you. Any favor it is in my power to grant, Monsieur de Barak. A man gave up his life to bring these treasures back safely, Monsieur Roussel. And I'd like to see the new hall named for him. Of course, Monsieur de Barak. He was our Arab guide. Mossad. <laughs> You have been listening to The Adventurers Club, brought to you each Saturday at this time by the W.A. Schaefer Pen Company. Today's adventure was based on the true life experiences of Count Byron de Prorock. The part of Adventurer de Prorock was played by Ed Prentice. The Adventurers Club is produced by Jack Simpson, directed by Russ Young, and written by Jack and Gretchen Sharp, with original music by Dave McCall.